Hey there everybody, Dr. Scott here. I've got two ideas I want to share with you today that are going to help you get more referrals in your practice. I just got out of an on-site here in uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico. Currently just walking around here through old historic downtown Las Cruces. Smelling all the smells of uh, the little Mexican cafes and taquerias that are basically on every block. Uh, oh, amazing smell. I'm going to have to decide for lunch whether I want red sauce or green sauce. Uh, if you were from the area, you'd know what that meant. If you are from the area, put your choice in the bottom in the comments down below. A red sauce or green sauce? I'm a red guy myself. Anyway, for those of you who are not following me, that's fine. Uh, like I said, I just got out of an on-site here uh, where I was working with a doctor and his staff, and I'm really excited about what they're about to accomplish based on a couple of things that we just did. Uh, and there were two times that I was working with the staff that I really saw them perk up. Sorry about the sunshine to shade there. It's nice for me to have sunshine though. Coming from Iowa, it's been zero degrees for the last couple of weeks. So nice to get some 70 degree weather finally. Anyways, the point was, uh, <laughs> two times that I saw the staff really kind of get involved. And one of them was when we were talking about the new patient process and we were kind of redoing the way they do new patients. And I asked them, you know, what's the whole point of this process? What are we trying to accomplish here? Uh, and at the beginning, the staff was just kind of like, you know, we want to get the patient through, we want to get them started with care. Uh, and towards the end, I explained to them what I think the point of the new patient process was, and I think this might help you, is that we shouldn't be looking so short term. And it doesn't matter how you practice, whether you're a, you know, a wellness doc or a pain driven doc, that doesn't matter to me. We still shouldn't be thinking short term in this process. If any of you have been through my perfect case acceptance course or heard me talk about it, then you probably know my feeling about the perfect, what perfect case acceptance means is not just that that patient gets the care, it's that that patient comes in, that they accept the doctor's recommendations, that they go out and schedule appointments for those recommendations, they show up for all of those appointments, and they also pay for all those appointments. But it's not just that, it's more than that. It also, perfect case acceptance to me means that they would also then go out and say such good things about you that they would practically drag all their own friends and family into your practice and refer them. And that those friends and family would then go accept your full case, schedule all those visits, pay for all those visits, and go out and drag their friends and family in. So that's what I wanna work on for your new patient process, is to make sure that you are inspiring those referrals later. If you're just doing a new patient process for that new patient, that's all you're thinking about, it's very short term, very limited thinking. You need to be putting together your new patient process to inspire referrals. Uh, and in fact, I even told them that the epitome of that would be a, a same day referral, meaning that patient goes through your process, leaves, and maybe even in the parking lot, they call on the phone, they call their spouse and say, hey, you really need to come here. This is such an amazing place. That's what our goal is with a new patient process. And the second thing I want to share with you today, um, at the end of that, I asked, you know, what is the best way to get referrals? Uh, and there was an office manager there who had been with a, another doctor before who was with another consulting company. Uh, and I said, well, what would they tell you? And he said, well, just ask more, ask for more referrals. I said, yeah, it's pretty common. That's the, the way it goes most times, unfortunately. I have a completely different uh, opinion of that. Uh, and the thought I shared with them, which, which really kind of got the point across, was if you went somewhere to do some business with somebody, so let's say you went to an auto mechanic or um, someone to fix your roof or no matter what it was, and you weren't greeted well, um, the service was just okay, not great, nothing to shout, up, shout about, and at the end you had a problem with your bill. Uh, you know, they, they misbilled you and you had to call and correct it or something like that. If they then turned around and asked you for a referral, would you be at all inspired to give one? Uh, my guess is no, right? You, you didn't enjoy your experience, you didn't enjoy the service. Uh, it was okay, but it certainly wasn't worth sending your friends and family in to have that same service. Now on the other hand, if you set up a new patient system like I just mentioned, or if someplace you go to, uh, when you walk in the door, you're greeted warmly. Uh, maybe you're offered a beverage. Uh, your, your appointment is on time. The service provider, whether it's a doctor or a mechanic or whoever it is, does a fantastic job, very skilled at the, what they do. And at the end of the visit, your bill is less than you expected. Would you need to be asked for a referral at that point? Again, my guess is no. Uh, referrals in chiropractic practice come a lot more from how you practice than they do how you ask or what you ask. Uh, so set up your new patient process to inspire those referrals. 
and set up every system in your practice to provide that ultimate service, give the patients what they want, and you'll have more referrals than you'll know what to do with. All right, I'm gonna sign off from now and go grab some uh, enchiladas and red sauce here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. I'll talk to you all soon.